Okay, we'll now continue with problem 2-4a on pages 92 and 93 in your text. And we'll pick back up with the second transaction that took place on April 30th. Paid salaries and commissions for the month, 11900 Again, we're looking for keywords. I always cue on the word paid. That lets me know cash was affected. Then I'll look for what did they pay. Well, they paid salaries and commissions for the month. So that's going to also affect salary and commission expense. This is the entry that got made by $2,500 too much last month. We corrected that here. Hopefully this month we're making it for the correct amount. So on the 30th, our two accounts affected. Salary and commission expense and cash. Okay, salary and commission expense is an expense account. So our salaries and commission expense for the year has now increased by $11,900. That's an expense account and they increase on the debit side. So we're going to enter salary and commission expense. As the debit, eleven thousand nine hundred. Cash of the business decreased. Cash is an asset. Assets decrease on the credit side. I don't always go over to the chart for cash. I think by now you're probably accustomed to that one. You may be to all the rest as well, but <coughs> excuse me. I'll just try to refer there on the uh, oddball accounts for sure. Okay, um, so why did we make this entry? Well, salary and commission expense for the year increased. It's an expense account. They increase on the debit side. We credited cash because we've paid salaries and commissions for the month. Cash of the business decreased. It's an asset. They decrease on the credit side. Okay, next, paid dividends, $4,000. Okay, see the word paid, so we know cash was affected. What did we pay? Dividends. So our dividends account would be affected. Now, like revenues and expenses, at the beginning of the year when we've paid no dividends so far, then the dividends account balance would be zero. Every time we... Um, the board votes to pay dividends, we increase that dividends account balance. So at the end of the year, we know what dividends were for that year. So dividends for the year have now increased. That account increases on the debit side. So we're going to debit dividends. It's a contra stockholders equity account. Stockholders equity accounts like common stock and retained earnings increase on the credit side. So a contra stockholders equity account would increase on the debit side. Dividends in this case were four thousand dollars. <throat> that would also affect cash of the business. Remember cash is an asset. In this case, if we paid out dividends, then cash of the business decreased. Assets decrease on the credit side. Okay, on the 30th, rented land purchased on April 15th to a local merchants association for use as a parking lot in May and June uh, during a street rebuilding program. Okay, and it says we received an advance payment of $10,000. Well, I'm definitely uh, going to key on those words, uh, received an advance payment of $10,000. That tells me we now have $10,000 more in cash than we did before this transaction. So the cash account increased. It's an asset. They increase on the debit side. Now, why did they pay us that cash? Well, they paid it to us for rent so they can use the land the months of May and June. But we're at April 30th here. 
on April 30th, we haven't earned any rent for May or June, even though we've been paid the 10000 already. We earn rent for May and June by allowing these uh, merchants to use the land in the months of May and June. So on May 1st, if we tell them, Lord, sorry, maybe no contract was signed, we say, which is poor business, but maybe no contract was signed, we change our mind, we go to the merchants on May 1st, and we say, look, uh, we're not going to let you use that land for a uh, parking lot during May and June. They're not going to just let us keep the $10,000, right? So the, I hope you understand we have not, even though we've been paid, we have not earned this $10,000. Well, we can't call it rent revenue unless we've earned it. So by accepting this rent prior to having earned it, that creates a liability for our business. And we're going to call that liability. See if you can pick it out over here. It's easy, right? Unearned rent. We now have more unearned rent than before we accepted this $10,000. We now have $10,000 in unearned rent. That creates a liability or future obligation for us. We either have to let them use the land for the months of May and June or give them their $10,000 back. So our liability unearned rent has now increased. Liabilities increase on the credit side. So we're going to credit unearned rent for $10,000. We debited cash because the asset account cash increased by 10000 We credited unearned rent because the liability account <clears throat> unearned rent increased by 10000 It's a liability. They increase on the credit side. And you guys, to, to go along with that a little further, by the time we got to the end of May, we would have earned half of that, right? So we would, at the end of May, we would decrease unearned rent by 5000 and increase our revenue account, rent revenue, by 5000 We'd do the same thing at the end of June, which would make our rent revenue account associated with this transaction have a $10,000 balance. And by that time, unearned rent would have gone to zero because by the end of June, we would have earned it all. Okay, let's move now to the next instruction. We've made all the journal entries, and you guys, that's probably the tough part. It's one of the tougher parts in the course. It takes a lot of practice. First, you have to memorize, given an account, you have to know what type of account it is. Then you have to memorize a system of debits and credits. For each account type, which side does it increase and decrease on? Probably the easiest way to do that is assets, dividends, and expenses increase on the debit side. Liabilities, common stock, retained earnings, and revenues all increase on the credit side, decrease on debit. You have to memorize that system. Then when you read the transactions, you have to, given that transaction, you have to pick out which accounts were affected. Then for each account affected, you have to decide whether the account increased or decreased. Then by knowing what type of account it is, and whether it increased or decreased, you can plug it into our system of debits and credits. Now this is going to be confusing in the beginning. What it takes to become proficient at it and to get better at it is practice. So maybe uh, try working this problem. I hope you're working this problem along with me. Maybe you want to try it again, try to make the journal entries yourself, and then check them by the video. If you'll notice above the video, I've included the template for this problem so you can work it along with me. Now let's go to the next transaction, or excuse me, the next instruction. Uh, number three says post to the ledger, extending the account balance to the appropriate balance column after each posting. What they're saying is they want us to transfer these journal entries to the appropriate space in our ledger. And our ledger is, we've looked at it already, it's just a separate space for each account that the business uses. And by transferring these journal entries over, 
we're going to update the uh, balances of the accounts for the transactions that occurred in the month of April. Okay, so we'll start at the top of our journal page. Rent expense was debited for 6500 on April 1st. So let's find rent expense. Okay, we already have the month in here, so you don't have to write it in again or type it in again. Just going to put in a one for the day. You leave the item column blank. All right, for the posting reference number, we're going to put in 18. And where did that come from? That's your page number from your journal. Okay. We put in a 1 for the date. 18 is the journal page number. We had a debit on the 1st to rent expense for $6,500. Your amounts that come over from the journal are entered in the debit or credit column, the first debit or credit column, <clears throat> and then we'll use those to update the debit or credit balance. Okay, in this case we have a debit balance for $30,000 a debit entry for 6500 since they're both debits we're going to add them together so we'll say 30,000 plus the 6500 makes our new debit balance 36,500 All right, then we'll come back to the journal and the account number for rent expense is 52 so we come back up And in the posting reference column of the journal, we're going to put in 52, the account number in the ledger that that uh, particular transaction was posted to. All right, now let's go to cash. On the first, it's, a, it's still the first, right? So on the first, we had a credit to cash for 6500 So we'll put in a one for the date. You leave the item column blank. We'll put in 18 for the journal page number. It's a credit to cash for 6500 All right, now we've got a debit balance and a credit entry. Since they're different, we're going to subtract. If you have a debit balance and a debit entry, you add them together. Credit balance and a credit entry, you add them together. But a debit balance, credit entry, credit balance debit entry we're going to subtract so if they're the same you add them together if they're different you'll subtract so this is going to be equal to 26,300 minus the credit entry for 6,500 that equals 19,800 all right cash is account number 11 so we're going to come back up and in the posting reference column of the journal I'm going to put in 11 to show that that's where it was posted to. Now I'd put these in in order. That way uh, I'm about to stop this video. So when I start back with the next video, I know the next account that needs to be posted is office supplies because the posting reference column alongside office supplies is blank. This lets me know that one has been posted to the ledger and which account it was posted to. Okay, we'll pick back up with our posting to the ledger uh, on the second journal, or the journal entry made on the second here in the next video. Thanks.